Oh, good morning everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up. I'm just lifting the last of my carrots. And I thought today I would revitalise the old topic that I stopped sort of last October, which was how to start an allotment plot. I move on from that very basic information I gave last year. Because other, you know, there are people out there now who are looking to start an allotment. So these were grown under protection here in the polytunnel. And it's protection I want to talk about today and to, to show to you. Of course, these will grow outside and there are varieties that you can grow outside. And I know Sean James Cameron recommended Eskimo and I bought some of them seeds for later in this year and I'll give them a go. So thanks for that, Sean. But anyway, so there's a nice healthy harvest of carrots. Lovely. These are Paris Parisienne. Look at them, beautiful little round things. Anyway, we'll move on to talking about the protection. When you first start an allotment plot, you, you've got so much to get done and you've got so many ideas and thoughts in your mind about how you want to start and what you want to grow and how you want to grow it. And it can all seem a bit daunting. So I want to give you a couple of quick ideas of how you can get yourself started on the right footing so that you've got some plans for this year. Now obviously I've got this massive tunnel, it's 28 foot long, 18 foot wide and it took me two years to find this frame. I was looking for a cheap frame and eventually I did find one on eBay and I very nearly missed it, I very nearly missed out on, on buying it. It cost me £100, I was so lucky and the whole tunnel finished with all the fitments and the plastic on was around about 350 quid, probably less than that. So was very very lucky to to get that but as i say i did put the work in it took me two years to find the frame and another six months to save up the money to buy all the bits and the plastic to go over it so it's by hard work and diligence that i've got it okay so here's my first bit of protection it's my hanging shelf and all my young seedlings especially the ones susceptible to things like slugs and to uh, and some mice, so things like, um, oh gosh, I can't think right now. I mean, peas, for instance, will be hung up on this. It's just hung up on these two wires, great big scaffold board. The seedlings go on there, and now the mice can't get at them, which can be a right pain in the, in the backside if things are lower down or on shelves that the mice can get to. Here, they've got to be like um, a Mission Impossible agent to get at them, because the only two access points are these two hanging wires so they generally don't get them and with slugs when I'm putting uh, pots of young seedlings up here I just put one or two slug pellets on the top just in case there's a slug in the actual compost I'm putting up here and that then protects them up here and it's a good thing okay I appreciate it. not everyone's got a polytunnel to hang one of these in but you can hang one outside as well if you get a couple of hanging basket um, brackets, for instance, you can put them on your fence or onto the side of a shed or something and still hang a shelf. So you've just got that added extra layer of protection. And it's using and utilising these things which help you get your seedlings to young plants and to plants that you plant out. So that's a good one, the hanging shelf. I love that. Now this is another layer of protection and it's possibly to my mind and for me probably one of the best ideas i've ever had to to build one of these it's a panelized i call it the hot box and it's panelized so this side is bolted on here and it's got wing nuts on the back so that it collapses and the whole thing collapses and can be stacked flat and put away in the shed when not in use but what this does it goes on the soil it's got a lid to go on top and I've just brought it inside, it's why it's a bit mucky, it's been outside all winter, hasn't been stacked up. Um, but this now will warm the soil underneath there. 
the volume of air in here during the daytime when the sun does come out, it's not out at the minute, but it'll warm the air in there very quick because it's plastic polysunnel and it's a plastic thing here. So it very, very quickly warms up and that helps to warm the soil just by a couple of degrees, but that can be the difference between these seeds germinating and not germinating. So I'll be sowing seeds on that soil Probably not this week because we've low temperatures predicted, but probably in a week to 10 days, I'll definitely be putting soil and seeds in this soil. And I'll leave this on as the plants grow, doubly protected. And that's just another one. So I've had that in use for, I can't think how many years now. Certainly at least four years, I would think, maybe five and last year I made some more to go on these two big long beds here. Uh, they're outside at a minute protecting some plants. We'll go and have a look at them now. <laughs> uh, just a quick look around this hot box. So you can just see the bolts in the corners. Thumb nuts or wing nuts. There we go. Now here are my bigger hot boxes. These are seven foot long, three and a half foot wide and about three and a half foot tall. At the moment, they're out here on the no dig beds. I've got two of them here along this bed and they've got wall flowers in because I, we get very, we get an awful lot of wind here in the winter. Um, I will take these off soon and let the plants get on with it. And then these will go back into the polytunnel. They're used on the two longer beds in the polytunnel there because my early season tomatoes, the ones that I start off very early, are again double protected. They're in here and then they're in the polytunnel. And then any other plants that I bring down that don't need the hanging shelf protection will also go in here between the tomato plants as well. So it's that double layer of protection. And if necessary, I've got fleece in the shed and I can throw fleece over as well. So I've got as much layers of protection that I possibly can. I start everything off at home on a propagator so that's on heat and then once they're germinated I want to very slowly reduce the heat um, that those those plants and those seedlings have and and that's to acclimatize it to the the outside weather as quickly as I possibly can that way um, they can go out and don't suffer any shock so it, for instance, it, it, they could be at home in a temperature of 15 degrees and come down here and plant them at six degrees and they think, oh, blooming neck, it's cold and they shrivel up and die. So you want to avoid that if you can and acclimatise them gradually. But this is, you know, something that's been a long time in the making for me. And prior to this, I've used other methods of protection. Some work, some don't, but we'll go and have a look at some methods now for the starter gardener, those who have just started their allotment plot and want to get some plants going. And at this time of year, when a, a new gardener has taken over a new allotment, the mind, your mind is racing, you're thinking, I've got all this ground to dig, I've got all these things I want to do, I've got all these seeds I want to sow, where do I start and how do I get going? So we'll go and look at some cold frame ideas right now and hopefully that will give you a, a heads up. <laughs> okay, so here we've got the simple and old-fashioned but works just as well Win straight up window frame and that's all it is it's an old window frame. you can see that the old paint's coming off i'm using the board the bed edges and a couple of bricks obviously you need to fill those gaps up instant cold frame and you can sow seeds in that and get plants going so that's one option and if the plant's getting too big put another layer of bricks in just raise it up so that's one option if you can get hold of an old window frame. So here is another quick and easy solution if you can get hold of them. This is a pallet collar. Uh, you can find these on places like recycled sites like um, Trash Nothing, maybe on Facebook Marketplace, or maybe people you know locally have got them. I've got a spare one. You know, or you can buy them on eBay and they're only pennies. I mean, don't pay stupid money for them. It is only four bits of wood with hinges on the corner, but you know, or you can get a few bits of pallet wood and just simply nail them together, you know, providing your DIY skills are okay. I know some people can't manage to do that, but 
there you've got to say a simple surround and all you need then is a sheet of plastic over the top and you've got an instant cold frame and you get an awful lot of plants in there especially if you're sowing from seed we'll have a look at another option and then we'll talk about the plastic so here's another option and it's an option you'll see in many places um, and I very much doubt that you'll go down to any allotment site and you won't see this blue hoop in use there and all it is is what they call one inch alkathene pipe and it's a water pipe that are used in many uh, new homes these days some places don't use copper anymore they just use these pipes um, so yeah you just cut lengths of that stick it in the ground and you put plastic over the top watering can there is for a sense of scale but you can see how we're now going up the sizes uh, starting at the window frame we went to the pallet collar now we've gone up to this which is a much bigger affair again you can get more plants in there and you just simply want some plastic thrown over the top and weighted down with some bricks and you've got an instant hoop house and in operation it's exactly the same as the polytunnel that it stood next to there um, it will reach the same temperatures as the polytunnel so it's a good option for starting young seeds and looking after young seedlings as well now for plastic options you can if you wish go and buy plastic online uh, you can go to places like first tunnels or robinson's polytunnels and buy bits of plastic off them work out the size you need measure the over the hoop distance make sure you go over all and make sure you've got overlap and you can buy if you want or you can do the old ethos of the allotment here which is the search skips now some people are a bit funny about that but if you're taking rubbish out of a skip you're making room for that person to put more rubbish in so nine times out of the ten if you go and knock on a door and say may i take that out of your skip i can use it on my allotments nine times out of ten they'll say yes that tenth time they'll try and charge you for it in which case just walk away it's rubbish they've thrown away um, but yeah just just a little bit of politeness helps and you'll get it another option you can use is if you know somebody's getting a new bed and mattress mattresses are covered in big plastic sheets just ask if you can have that and you've got an instant cover okay it's not the best plastic in the world and it might only last one or two years but it will get you out of a hole and it will get you started on your allotment plot remember you've only been here a couple of weeks you're frantically digging and trying to get something done here you can get something positive done you've got a ready-made coal frame you've got plastic over it you've got used recycled resources you've got seeds going while you're doing something else and i think this is key now here is one of the simplest solutions of all it's just a layer of bricks and this is an old clear feed sack just chuck that over weight that sack down and you've got an instant cold frame with a good depth so you can sow seeds in there and you know in that area there you make your little drills three or four inches apart and you'll get five different varieties of vegetables or flowers whatever growing in there and <coughs> excuse me and when they come up they've let's say they've got that three or four inch tolerance to grow before they're touching the top of that plastic if you want it a bit taller just put an extra layer of bricks on but in general by the time they're up at that height you could just take the bricks away and the plastic move it along a little bit and sow some more seeds and they will just carry on growing because they used to being out here and growing in that soil I mean you could for a day or two just when you when you're down just take the plastic back let them get a bit of breath before you go home and this is called conditioning your plants hardening them off so for two or three days you just when you go home you cover them up and when you're down you take take it off and then cover them up again and then eventually just take the whole thing away move it along and sow your next seedlings now at this time of the year i know we've got some some very cold weather predicted for this this coming weekend and temperatures are dropping again are going to be around the zero so that's no good but the thing i would advise you sowing in 
in these things is brassicas. So that's your, all your cabbages, your cauliflowers, your broccolis, your Brussels sprouts, uh, your kales. All of that family will sort of germinate at a temperature around about seven or eight degrees. So the soil temperature doesn't need to be that warm to get going. Now you'll look at the seed packets and they will quote around 15, 16 degrees on the seed packet, but that is for optimum growth. And you have to remember this, that seed packets, the information that's on there is for optimum growth because that seed supplier wants you to do good. But knowing that you can sow at lower temperatures and given that you've just started an allotment, it means you can come down, dig a little patch of soil, get a, a Heath Robinson coal frame together and you can sow seeds and while you're digging the beds that you'll eventually plant these plants in these can be growing so you it's like having an extra pair of hands helping you so you can get that start on the year and once they're hardened off and growing you can let them carry on growing until they're a decent size dig them up and move them straight into the bed and you've got the benefit of that these plants will be used to your soil on your plot and they won't be grown in compost somewhere else around the country and you've bought them from a garden centre. They won't be grown on somebody else's plot, maybe in compost, and you don't know if they're hardened off or not. You've done it yourself. So, so you've got your own plants that you've grown from seed and then you're eating later straight off your dinner plate. And the other bonus to doing brassicas is that you're not importing, importing into your plot club root disease. So on that respect, I never accept a brassica of anyone. I, I swap plants with people all year round, but I never accept the brassica plants because you can import a disease into your plot which then can be hard to eradicate or to grow around so start your own brassicas off that's that's my advice and get used to growing you could another brassica is radish and you could feasibly in a week's time when the weather's warmed up slightly sow radish in there and have a crop in march that could be your first crop of the year your first crop off your new plot Fresh radish, nice French breakfast radish, nice long radish, nice and peppery. You can saute them in a pan, have them on toast, or or put them on as a side side de uh, veg on on your plate. Fantastic! Have it with a steak. There you go. <laughs> your first crop in March. How's that? <laughs> and uh, here is one of the simplest cold frames of all job done so that's it for this one I'll be bringing you more in this series uh, as the season moves on and as I come across things I think right I'll film that for for the new allotment holders just where I think it can be of a, a, a benefit to you guys so that's it for now look after yourselves please stay safe and I'll see you in a couple of days Toronto <laughs>